I heard that time turn off. Okay. I've already done three of them. And I'm going to go ahead and do the other one. Grab my scoreboard. And I'm just going to score this at, let me see if I'm in the shot, really far away. Let me move this over here and see if that, I don't know if that's better or not. Now I'm going to make a shadow. Um, We're going to score it at 7 eighths. So it's this little dash. I'm going to go in a little bit. I think. I'm with Gabber. So, right here, 7 eighths. Wait, where are we? 7 eighths score and 1 and 1 eighth. So it creates this little gusset area. So this is going to be my hinge. I've done four of these, so you need four of these. I'm going to go back. I'm sorry. I'm just already now I'm used to how it was. Scan back out. This bugs me that I did that. All right. And then take your scissors, and you're, again, you're going to just do that little triangular area. For any time you fold something down, it makes it a little neater, less bulk on the corners. I don't know. It's just the way she did it, and that's why I did it like that. So now I have four pieces, and these are my hinges. I'm going to use wet glue again. Uh, We're going to connect these to our book section. So you're going to go along, fold along the score lines like that. So now this is your hinge. And I didn't practice for this part of the tutorial, so we'll see how it goes. I had everything else planned up to here. So now I'm just winging it. So we have four of these. And the way you do it is you connect the hinge to the front the front page. All right, I'm going to take out all my, uh, I got to take these out. I don't know why I put them back in. We're going to connect the hinge to the front of all these pages. So we're connecting it this way. So at the end, you'll have three hinges going that way. And the final hinge gets connected back to back to your front page, to your front page. And this will be where your front cover is connected. And I don't know why. I mean, I no, you can't. You can't do it any other way. Um, now, that's how you do it, and that's how I've always done it. So that's how we're going to do it. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to go ahead and, whoops, go ahead and do that. We're going to do that so I can show you how I do it. Make sure we're in the shot. And I'm going to put glue. Now, the other thing I want to really make clear about this, again, in order so that your book, your binding, has room here, we do not want to butt this, these lines, right up against each other. You want to come down, either be right on the edge or even a smidge over because when you when the hinge opens, it'll have room to go to the back. If it's back far, you're you're taking up your gusset. You don't want to take up the gusset. It's it's just better when you glue it either right up against the edge or a smidge over, okay? Just just so you know, because it'll end up making your binding tight. Your book will close like really tight, and then when you add things to it, it'll it'll open like this. You want it to be able to close like that, like stay closed like this. You don't want it to like be stuck like that because you glued everything too tight in your binding. So I'm gonna put I'm gonna put my glue on, let's see, on this piece on the bottom. I'm going to cover this with glue. And I've done lots of these with the score tape before. And you would use, you would cover that with score tape if you were using score tape. Cover it with score tape. Then I'm going to fold this back so that I can see that edge. And then I'm going to line it up top and bottom and then to the edge. So it takes a minute. Make sure you're lined up and get it right where you want it to the best you can. You know, you don't have to be perfect. It's okay. Take your towel and burnish that down. Wipe away anything that comes out the edges. Flip it over. Just wipe away your edges. So it looks like 
I've done pretty good. I, I did it right up against the edge. So see, that's able to come real flat. It's not like going like this, like I have no room. I don't know if you know what I mean, but that actually worked out really well. All right, so good job, Sarah. <laughs> so we have our first hinge connected. I'll do another one. Same thing, make sure you have the front of the book. This is my front and I'm gonna add my hinge here. I'm gonna put the glue on the bottom there and then I'm gonna stick that right there. So I'm gonna cover this with glue. Grab that back there so that I can see the edge. Line it up on the top and bottom and in the front. Put it down and it's a little mushy so you can kind of move it a little. I don't want it hanging over too much. Right on that edge if you can. Stick it down. Burnish it real well. See this one? I think I was a little closer on this edge. And you'll see what I mean. This did not quite get to the edge. It's pretty good. This side is way looser than this side gets tight because I wasn't, but you can always kind of smidge it up a little. All right, so that's good. I got two. All right, I'm gonna go away and come back. And you know what, we'll do the front one real quick so you can see the front and then I'll finish the other one off camera. So for the first, so this will be, this is gonna be, say they're all done, right? I have one, two, three, they're all done. I did them all the same. The fourth one's gonna go here because this is gonna hold my cover, one of my chipboard pieces. But this one would have one here. You know what, I'll put this in the middle. This is what's gonna hold your back cover. Oh, I am not in the shot, damn it. I'm sorry, I hope, I hope I'm in the shot because I'm not used to shooting like this. I usually have it right in front of me. All right, so let's go. This is the front, this is the back. This is gonna hold your back chipboard and we need one for the front. So we're gonna glue this to the front. So for that, you just take, you know what, I wanna use the dryer one first, all right. Same thing, but this time, you're gonna glue it facing that way. So I wanna adhere, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put the glue on this. And the same thing, you don't, you wanna make, keep it as even as you can. I think I'm at like seven, eight minutes. So after this, I'll go away and come back. Cover that with glue. Butt it up against the edge. Really, this one, you can keep it just even. Just do, them, do it right on top of that one. Push it down. Burnish. Kind of squish that, made that bent. All right. So this is your front piece. It has two flaps now. One. And we're going to connect all these together. I'll come back and we'll do that. Okay, I'm back. I've got all three sections of my book assembled. This hinge got a little bent. I'm just gonna straighten it out a little, make it a little square. So you should look like that. This is the spine of your book. Okay, can you see? Yeah. Um, we're gonna now adhere the whole book together. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the front page. Okay, it's already, oh, that is, that's only one. All right, gonna connect these together. 
So to do that, you want to make sure that the actual bottom of the book, so that would be the envelopes, are perpendicular. Don't worry about your hinges much because you might not have put, in that, put them perfectly together. Um, but make sure when, you're, when you glue this together that your envelopes are perpendicular. Okay, so I'm going to try that. My dog wants something. That's her wants something noise. So I'm going to put, I think I want to put, I think I'm going to put the glue on here. And then when I hold this, I can just maneuver it this way. I think that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, I think, I think that is the best bet. You know what I want to do too is take these big tags out. Take them out so you don't have anything distracting you from, uh, this is just not a good shot. I don't know what's going on. All right. Um, I'm going to put glue down here. And I'm going to go right up to the edge as best I can. Even though we still have Tyvek and duct tape, we still want to make this as even and as good as we can. So I'm pushing forward. This is the hinge. That's the gusset. I'm pushing forward that bottom edge. And then I can see these two edges and make sure they line up. So put that right on top of that, up to the edge, but make sure that we're even here. I think we are. I'm going to push down, open it up, wipe that glue off, burnish that down real good, squish that glue out. And on this side too, just squish it back and wipe that glue. So you can kind of see, oh, my battery's dying already. I got to change that next time. You can see your three gusset areas. They should lay on top of each other. So you have a nice flat binding, but your sides are also flush. All right, so we're going to do the same thing. This is the front of my book. I'm going to use this edge and I'm going to glue this to my third part, the back. I'm going to put the glue on the bottom again because I like that. I liked how that uh, was easier to do. I haven't made one of these in a while. I've been doing resin and so many other things. I kind of got away from constructing these books. So I'm going to, again, I'm going to take this part and get that out there so I can see it. Push it up against the edge, but then make sure that I'm um, flush this way. So just touch it, and it looks good. I can see, you know what, I forgot to take my tag out, of course, on that one. But they're pretty flush. See how they're all... Oh, not that part. Here we go. Got a lot of overflowage. Burnish that down. And that's it. Okay, so our book is now assembled. Let's see how it goes like this. And you know, I mean, it's not, it doesn't have to be perfect because a lot of that will get hidden. All that's going to get hidden with the uh, duct tape binding. But this is page one, the page we created, and then the next page. So that's our first section. Here's the hinge page, page we created, and the back page. And here's the other hinge. Then you have this page page we created, the back page. Now we're going to put, we're going to get our uh, covers ready. So you have your book, your book is assembled. You have all your tags and everything ready to go um, along with your uh, photo mats that are made out of the cards. We're going to just um, 
put the pretty paper on them and they'll be ready to go. So I'm going to get the chipboard over here and I'm going to show you how I cut my chipboard. And like I said, this is um, from Joann's and I ordered quite a lot of it at the time. I got like a big, I don't know how much, it was a while ago. Um, and it's a medium weight chipboard. And for your chipboard covers, you're going to go seven and a half, I'm pretty sure. Let me make sure. Two chipboard covers, seven and a half by five and a half. Or take your own measurement and make sure, but that is what I'm pretty good with. I don't mind if my tags stick out a tad. See how my tags are a little sticking out on the top? But if you want, because I usually go flush to the bottom, and then I just save enough room so, because the pages are about seven inches, but with the tags, they come up, I don't know, they're seven, six and a half, maybe, whatever. So, but even on like on my little one, it covers that so that's basically what you want to do you want to kind of be flush to the bottom or like a smidge in like say let's see here we go an eighth of an inch to quarter of an inch from the bottom of the chipboard cover and so everything's centered in there so it looks nice all right boy this is weird having it to the side I'm not used to that all right so this I've already cut down to six to seven and a half so this I'm going to get both my covers out of, oh, no, I didn't. Is this seven and a half? Which part did I use? What did I do? This is actually, yes, yeah, seven and a half. Thank you. Seven and a half by five and a half. So I need two covers. First thing I'm going to do is change my um, cutting blade. I have, it's an older cutting blade that I've just marked up. I had chipboard on here, CB and stuff, but now it's just marked so that I know when I reach in my drawer, this is the one that I use to cut chipboard because chipboard will, will dull your blades down. So, and I don't know what kind of cutters you guys, if you have the guillotine or whatever, whatever you can do to cut chipboard, but this works for me. This is, I just use like actually one of my duller one I would consider, I think it was new when I started, but then I just always only use this for chipboard. That's kind of, so we're going to go five and a half, put this, put this in here. There we go. Five and a half, measure it up, go to five and a half. And then I just go, I score, like I go back, forth, back, forth. So go one, two, three, four. That usually does it. And then you just go, and it comes apart. So I'm going to do another one. Um, let's cut this side. Five and a half, right? Yep. I just get one, two, three, four. So it cuts really pretty good because I've had I've struggled with chipboard. Some of the chipboard's much thicker than this, I guess. But this is a nice weight chipboard. I really like it. So I would recommend Joanne's. Oh, and then don't forget to change out your blade. And I just throw mine in the drawer and then I put my paper cutting one back in my cutter. And for your covers, you need to choose um you need a bigger piece of paper. So what I've chosen is, I'm going to go with brown. Because this is a baby um, book. And I'm using old, this is actually, um, try and dig it out here now. I wasn't prepared. Say I didn't pre-do this. I think it's a DCWV baby, baby boy. But I can't find the cover. Where is it? Here it is. Yeah. Baby boy stack. It's got some glitter. It's got some critters on it and stuff. It was cute. So I had made a baby boy one before, and this is what I have left. So I'm using it. Um, you know, I could have bought more paper, but, you know, I'm going to use it. So I have some um, baby boy embellishments, and this happened to have, like, this piece of brown ribbon on here. It's just a sticker. Um, but I thought, okay, and then I'll play the blue in. I didn't want to use a busy page. And then all of these are just blue. I think I'm going to put special delivery and like I'll put the, you know, what is that called? A stork. So we'll see. But I am going to go with brown. I have brown duct tape for my spine. You could use black. You can use gold, silver, whatever color you want. There's so many colors of duct tape, but I happen to have brown, this color. I think I might even have brown. I'll look later, but I definitely have tan. Um, and I'm going to, I might put some lace on the edge too. I don't want to girl it up too much for uh, a baby boy, but mom's like lace. So that's, you know, 
So what we want to do is we want to cut this, and I didn't do my pre-measuring. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to show you right now what I would do is, the way we're going to do this is we're going to fold this around the whole, you're not going to see any chipboard once it's covered. And I'm going to do seven by nine. And that's going to leave me three quarters of an inch all the way around this to cover that page. So let's go ahead and cut a piece of, for the cover, seven by nine. Seven by nine. Let's see. I'm going to go this way. Damn camera's in the way. Sorry. All right. So I'm going to go seven by nine. And you can score it if you want to, if you feel like that's going to be helpful. I'm pretty good at eyeballing, so I will just set this down in the middle and eyeball it. I don't need to score it. And then when I do fold it up, I just make sure to do it really, you know, I score over it with my, um, wherever it went now, this bone folder and stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm at seven minutes already, but I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to just use some of my ATG gun, put that on the chipboard, just run a few strips down it to hold it in place and center it on this uh, paper. With about, It's about three quarters of an inch all the way around, so I'm really good at eyeballing. But if you wanted to score it, you got to, you know, get your scoreboard out and do that. And then I'm going to just push this up against the edge and... Um, score it with my bone folder. All four sides. You're not cutting these edges. You're not mitering anything because I want to show you how you hide the... Um, and a lot of you girls who have made these before, um, you know what I'm doing. But I learned this from Annette Green. She's um, a Graphic 45. She's on the Graphic 45 design team. She's got a blog and... Um, this is the first time I think I saw that was when I made these little books. Where the heck is it now? This. Remember I had the tutorial on these when I covered, uh, you make a little, this has a, like a sleeve so you can change them out and you make these little notebooks. That's how she did her corners here. She miters, or not miters them because that would be cutting. But you can't see the chipboard or I used, um, I used cereal boxes for these. So that's what we're going to do. So you, I got my, I have my score now. My score is done. I'm going to go.